We begin with a major development in the Republican effort to repeal and replace Obamacare. Senator John McCain says he cannot support Senator Lindsey Graham and Bill Cassidy's latest health care bill. The Arizona senator released a statement this afternoon and it reads, I cannot in good conscience vote for the Graham Cassidy proposal. I believe that we could do better working together, Republicans and Democrats, and have not yet really tried. Sean Sullivan is a congressional reporter for The Washington Post. He joins me now. So, Sean, what does Senator McCain's no vote mean for the future of this specific bill? Is it over? Uh, it's almost over. It seems like this could be a potentially decisive blow against this bill. You already have Rand Paul out there saying he does not support this. Now you have John McCain saying it. Uh, Republicans can only lose two votes on this, and here we are. They are at two votes, but we have a bunch of other senators, including Susan Collins, uh, Lisa Murkowski, and some others who have expressed concerns about this bill. Now that McCain is out and he's saying no, I think some of those senators might feel cover to also say no. So this bill is really, really uh, on the brink right now of complete defeat. And when you look at Senator McCain's reason for being against the bill, he says it has more to do with process. And he even says, I would consider supporting legislation similar to that offered by Graham Cassidy were it the product of extensive hearings, were there debates and amendments. Can you explain why that is so important for him? Well, McCain is somebody who's been in the Senate a very long time. He's very much a traditionalist. He likes things to be done through what he calls regular order. He wants to have hearings. He wants to be deliberative. Um, he views the Senate as a place where you slow down, you look at things in a thoughtful way, you don't rush towards something, and you do it in a very, very public way. And when he looked at this, and he's been saying this all week, he didn't see that. What he saw was Republican leaders scrambling, trying to pull something together at the very last minute, and it really, really bothered him as somebody who's been in the Senate for decades. And so what we saw in his statement today is really consistent with what we've heard all week from him. Uh, and you're right, it, it is more the process than the substance of the bill because, you know, his home state governor, Doug Ducey, a Republican, signed off on this bill and said, you know, we should do this. Uh, he had the policy cover that he would have needed to support this, but in the end, it really came down to how this bill was pulled together at the last minute. You know, Sean, Obamacare wasn't exactly a bipartisan effort. Do you think that a bipartisan effort to help fix this health care system is really an option at this point? Uh, it, it's looking unlikely that it is. You know, we've seen some small-scale efforts to do that. Lamar Alexander, who is one of McCain's longtime colleagues, has been trying to work with Democrats on a solution that would stabilize the insurance markets under Obamacare. But a lot of Republicans are saying, look, we're not interested in that stuff. We're talking about repeal here. We're not interested in propping up this law. So if, if this truly is the end for this repeal effort, it remains to see, it remains to be seen, I should say, where this goes from here. Do they actually get together and get something done on a bipartisan basis. Right now, the signs are that that is a very unlikely prospect. And meanwhile, Sean, the clock's ticking. You've got the reconciliation deadline just over a week away. And last go round, Senator McCain didn't even announce his intentions in advance. What do you make of the timing of this announcement? Well, I think it caught a lot of people by surprise, as he did last time, catching a lot of people by surprise. You know, going into this week, there was a lot of concern about Lisa Murkowski. What was she going to do? I think Republican leaders and the Republicans I talked to were more confident that McCain would support this because his very close friend, Lindsey Graham, was the one pushing this bill. And that's different from the July effort when McConnell essentially wrote the repeal effort. So I think a lot of Republicans were more comfortable saying, look, hold on, if anybody can convince John McCain, it's Lindsey Graham, but clearly that was not the case. Clearly concerns about Murkowski and other Republicans uh, should have really been focused more on McCain, as we see from his statement today. Do you think we can expect Senator McConnell to still bring this up for a vote, even if it doesn't have the support from McCain? Well, that's going to be a very, very difficult decision that he's obviously facing right now. I mean, it was an embarrassment for the majority leader to bring this to the floor in July or to bring a similar effort, I should say, to the floor in July, only to see it defeated uh, in the middle of the night in a vote. So I think he wants to avoid that again. Uh, you know, the Republicans I've talked to this week have said they don't expect him to bring this up unless he is sure that there are going to be 50 votes. And right now it really looks like there's not going to be. I mean, Susan Collins hasn't said that she's a definitive no yet, but most of the Republicans who are looking at the vote count here all week long, they've basically counted Collins as a hard no. And so if she does indeed become a hard no, you're at three no votes and this thing is over. So what do you think it means if there's another failed attempt to repeal health care? What does it mean for the Republican agenda? Well, I think it, it's another setback for the Republicans. They have not been able to shepherd through any sort of big sweeping legislation. 
And on this issue, I think this particularly irks a lot of Republicans because this is something they have promised for seven years. In election after election, Republicans have told voters, we will repeal and replace Obamacare. Give us the reins of government. Give us the power. And here they are. They have the reins of government. They have the power. They control the White House. They control Congress. So I think a lot of the Republican base, a lot of voters and activists, are looking at this and they're scratching their heads and they're saying, wait a minute, we worked hard for you guys, we helped put you in power and you can't even repeal this law. So I think there are a lot of uh, elected officials, including Mitch McConnell, who are worried about what impact that might have in the midterm elections. And I think they're worried that a lot of these voters might just stay home and say, you know what, we voted for you guys, you didn't give us what you said you would deliver, we may not turn out next time. Sean, what do you think ultimately when you're looking at where the White House needs to go from here, trying to get some sort of a legislative win. If you're in the White House, what do you think they do? Where do they pivot? Well, I think right now they have to pivot hard to tax reform. That is the next big thing. That is something that they have prepared for for a while. And in fact, next week, uh, negotiators are supposed to release a more specific blueprint of what their tax reform plan is going to look like. But that's a heavy, heavy lift. And you've got a lot of disagreements among Republicans about what the tax laws should look like. And you're coming off a defeat like this, where you can't repeal Obamacare. Uh, it makes it even more difficult. Uh, I think there are a lot of Republicans in the White House and on Capitol Hill who believe that wins beget more wins and losses beget more losses. And if this bill is indeed uh, you know, finished after today, that does not bode well for tax reform. They wanted momentum going into next week when they were supposed to release their tax reform bill. They didn't want something like this. Sean Sullivan, thank you for joining us, Sean. Sure, my pleasure.